Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. I hope everybody is feeling good. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about a situation that has to do with a woman who gets with a man, they have a child together, and then they split up. We hear stories like this quite often. And the ending of this story is something that most people are not suspecting. Before we go any further, I just want you to stop and thank today's sponsor, Audible. Audible is the world's leader in audio entertainment, audiobooks, podcasts, and Audible originals. I have personally been a paying member of Audible for many, many years, and I really enjoy listening to like audiobooks or even sometimes their podcast when I'm doing things like going for a long walk or when I'm cooking around the house or when I'm cleaning or when I just need a break from social media. And Audible has a must-hear collection of the latest and greatest in the thriller genre and what the thriller genre has to offer. And they have such a wide uh, category of thriller type of content. And it just goes so much further than like storytelling because when you're listening to audiobooks on Audible, you can like hear more of the psychology aspect, which is something that I am personally very fascinated with. Some of my current favorites are American Predator, and that is actually the very in-depth storytelling about Israel Keys. I actually did a video on him a couple years ago. Also, The Betrayal, and this is about the crisis in the Catholic Church. Also, this audiobook, Chaos, this is actually about Charles Manson, but it's not just about him. This audiobook goes into some of the biggest secrets of the 60s. And I've also been really enjoying listening to audiobooks about the Nephilim. Do you know about the Nephilim? If not, look look it up. If you have not already tried Audible, well now is your chance because Audible is going to give all y'all new members a free trial and members also can get full access to a very large and growing selection of included audiobooks, Audible Originals, and their podcast. And when you become an Audible member, you get to choose one title a month from their entire catalog, including the like latest bestsellers and their new releases. So to get your free trial, all you gotta do is go to audible.com forward slash Christina Randall, or you can just text code Christina Randall to 500 500 for a free trial of audible today yes all you got to do is go to audible.com forward slash christina randall or text code christina randall to 500 500 to get your free trial today thanks again audible now, real quick i have a question for y'all something that i want you to think about what would you do to save your relationship like how far would you go would you go to therapy? Would you suggest maybe girls or guys nights out? Maybe even an open marriage? You know, I don't know, animal therapy? Like what would you do or how far would you go to be willing to save your marriage? That brings us to the case of Anastasia Holmes. Now, Anastasia goes by Annie to all of her family and friends. She was born in 1981 in Gresham, Oregon, and she was raised by her mother and her stepfather after her biological father passed away when Annie was just a teenager. Annie had what was considered to be a pretty like normal childhood, and from everything I could find, she pretty much stayed out of trouble. She was a good girl, she loved her family, and she she didn't really like cause any waves in her life. Annie loved to play tabletop role playing games. Think games like Dungeons and Dragons. And she spent a lot of her time playing games at like these local shops. There was this one game shop that Annie would go to to play games and hopefully attract other people there that likes to play these types of games too. And this is when she met a man named Matthew Hester. And he also really liked playing the same type of games that she played. 
Annie and Matt basically instantly had a connection and they began dating. And not too long after that, they got married in 2008. Then in 2011, the two of them had a daughter together. Friends would say that Annie absolutely loved her daughter and she loved her husband. And she planned on being with her husband, Matt, for the rest of her life. Annie wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, but she wasn't able to because her and Matt's marriage basically started to fall apart. Now you guys remember that question that I had for y'all at the beginning of this video. Annie loved Matt. And when their marriage was falling apart, she was desperate to do anything that she could basically to fix it, to keep him interested, to keep this marriage and their family together forever. And she agreed to try to have an open marriage with Matt. However, there was only one condition with this open marriage and it was that they had to be honest with each other about who they were seeing on the side. Now, this was the last ditch effort uh, to try to save their marriage, but it only ended up making things worse. Annie supposedly found out that Matt had actually been seeing someone else and he lied to her about it, which broke the only rule that they basically had set up. And at this point, completely tore her trust with him like, up. You guys can only imagine. So Annie at this point is like, I've tried everything. I've even said it's okay for you to step outside of the marriage. Just let me know. And he was still hiding and not being honest with her. Now at this point, it was around 2012 and Annie decided that she just, she couldn't do anything else. She had tried everything even this whole open marriage type of situation, and even that didn't work, and so she went on to file for a divorce. Now, once the divorce was finalized, Annie got full custody of their daughter, but Matt was still able to have her on the weekends. And Annie being newly single at this point, she knew that she had to figure out a way to provide for her and her daughter, and so she got a job at a call center and moved into a one-bedroom apartment. And already, minus the like little deal they had with the marriage situation. This sounds like so many people I know in their relationships, you know, they just, they, they get together and I'm so, sure a lot of you guys watching this have a kid. It doesn't work out. One of them ends up becoming a single parent, doing everything that they can to make ends meet and try to co-parent with their ex. Now, Matt, on the other hand, even though Annie was doing all of this other stuff, now got her own apartment, taking care of their daughter, working at this call center. Matt wasn't as motivated. And Annie said that Matt actually was never consistent with paying child support because every time she turned around, he was losing his job or quitting a job, allegedly, for one reason or another. And I think this is a good place to let you know that I'm not a professional. I'm just pulling my uh, information from very public sources that are that are already out there, you guys go do your own research and form your own opinions because I'm filtering this through my own words. But she couldn't get child support out of, out of him because every time she turned around, he was losing the next job. And because of this, Matt decided that it was time for him to find a roommate too. So he ended up finding a woman named Angela McCraw and Angela was single and she was a mother of three. Now, you gotta keep them separated. So we got Annie, okay? and we got Angela. So now Angela is living with Matt as a roommate and her three children. Then within a month of Matt and Angela being roommates, they become a couple, and by 2014, the two of them get married. Now after Matt and Angela got married, things started to change. Matt wanted to spend a lot more time with his daughter that he had with Annie, but Annie would say that no matter what she tried to do, it's like she could not have a good co-parenting relationship with Matt. And I do want to throw in there that I saw neighbors speak about Annie and I seen an interview with Annie's sister. And Annie, from what every, everything I could find, never caused problems with anybody. She did everything she could to, even as a little girl, to make people around her happy and not, you know, 
make anybody upset. She seemed very non-confrontational. I mean, as we can see, the whole marriage situation, she was willing to basically do whatever to keep this marriage going. And so now Matt's married to this other woman with three kids. Now he wants to be heavily involved in his daughter's life. But then now there's all this friction between the two of them while Annie's trying to co-parent. I'm sure some of y'all know exactly what that feels like. However, at around 2.59 a.m. on June 10th of 2016, 36-year-old Annie made a frantic call to 911 saying that she had been attacked in her apartment. 911. Oh, I'm sorry to tell me. 911, how can I help you? I'm sorry to tell me. What happened? Somebody tried. Where is this person out now, at now? I'm not here. Do you need an ambulance? Yes. No. Do you know the name of the person that did this to you? No. Are you bleeding a lot? Okay. I'm getting lots of help heading in that direction, okay? Can you tell me what your name is? First responders arrived within minutes and they rushed Annie to the hospital where she was pronounced deceased. They tried everything that they could to save her or revive her and nothing worked. Now, Annie's autopsy revealed that she had been struck, we'll say with like a blunt force, sharp object over 60 times and the wounds ranged from the depth of about a half of an inch to eight inches, okay? Eight inches deep. And they basically pierced all of her uh, vital organs. It was an intense scene that the investigators arrived at. When the detectives were looking over the crime scene, this is when they realized that it appeared that Annie's window air conditioner had been pulled out from the window and a cinder block was placed beneath the window and this looked like it was used to be stepped on to step up into the window. They believe that this is where the attacker entered Annie's apartment. Also, they saw quite a bit of uh, red bodily fluid splattered evidence that indicated that Annie had actually been laying in her bed when she was attacked. They also said that from the crime scene, they could tell that she tried to make her way to the front door to escape. And she also had quite a bit of defensive wounds on her hands, showing that she did try to fight for her life. There were also several blood at the crime scene and also a footprint in this red bodily fluid as well that was found on the floor. Detectives began to search all around like the neighborhood and they went off to interview several of Annie's neighbors who said that they did hear screaming at around 11 p.m. They heard a bunch of thuds and moans afterwards, but they didn't see anything suspicious. Now, remember the 911 phone call came in at 2.59 a.m. So, from everything that's out there, it looks like whoever came into her apartment could have been there for like four hours. And it seems like the person that came in and was there for four hours, it could have been like a torture session. While the detectives were scoping out the scene, they found Annie's daughter's room with all of the toys and stuff like that. And they realized that there was no little one in the apartment. And this is when they began to panic for a while because they thought that maybe whoever came into the apartment came in there and did this and left with Annie's daughter. However, as they continued to investigate, this is when they found out that Annie was actually with her father, Matt, that current weekend for his visitation with her. So the detectives went and found Matt and they brought him in for questioning. Matt went in willingly and he told the detectives that he had picked his daughter up late that day from Annie. He also told the detectives that he had zero reason to want Annie gone. But during the interview, the detectives received security camera footage from Annie's apartment building that showed a car that looked an awful lot like Matt and Angela's car. And this car was at Annie's apartment complex. Now, when Matt was asked about this, he said he did not know why his car would be there because he was asleep the whole time. When the detectives interviewed Angela, Matt's new wife, Angela told the detectives that him and Annie had been in this like 
nasty like custody battle over their daughter and that that Annie was not allowing Matt to see like their daughter as much as he wanted to so it seemed like there was a little bit of friction there that Matt had left out during his interview with the detectives. Now, Angela did deny that the car that was in the security camera footage was her and Matt's. She also said that the night that all of this stuff went down, that she had been really sick and she was throwing up on herself at the house and that Matt had been helping her clean and clean herself up. But this was also another detail that Matt never mentioned in his interview, which seems pretty important because if they say, where were you that night? And you say, oh, I was at home playing games with the kids, da, 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 da. But now your wife is saying that she was super sick. She was getting sick all over the place. And he was helping to clean that up. You would think that that would be something that you would mention. However, Matt and Angela's roommates did tell the detectives that they saw Matt and Angela at the home and that they had also saw them sleeping that night. And so because of this, they had to let Matt and Angela go home. According to court records, Matt was wanting to get full custody and he had been claiming that Annie was an unfit mother. But Annie worked a full-time job and she kept a very nice and clean home. And so no matter what Matt told the courts, they could not prove that Annie was an unfit mother. Matt and Angela, on the other hand, apparently lived in filth and they were only surviving financially off of government assistance. Matt said that all of his and Angela's children's had like all of these different disabilities. And because of that, him and Angela actually got a nice size social security disability benefit checks for each of the kids. And I think it was around like $2,000 a month or something like that. Angela's ex-husband, you follow me? This is Angela right here, Matt's new wife at the time. Angela's ex-husband told the detectives that the reason that he divorced Angela was because she was convinced all of their children needed prescription medications for their several different disabilities to the point where he just couldn't take the amount of poison and what he considered to be drugs that Angela was putting into their bodies anymore. And he said that it was a constant like stream of arguments between the two of them. Now, I don't know what was really going on with Angela or her children or whatever, but the undertone sounds like Again, this does not mean everybody does this, but the undertone from researching this, it almost sounded like she was pushing like different disabilities or, you know, taking her small children to the doctors in order to, you know, tell the doctors that they had all these issues in order to get medication and to get them labeled with stuff so she could also get money. Again, I don't know if that's true, but from the research, that's what it sounds like was being said. And not only did allegedly Angela do that with her three children, but it was said that Angela was convinced that Matt and Annie's daughter had bipolar disorder. Annie definitely did not agree that her daughter, her very small child at this time, had bipolar disorder. And allegedly, she said that she believed that it was just another attempt from Angela and Matt to get more disability benefits. Another thing that is pretty interesting that the detectives found out was that only a month before Annie's passing, a judge actually awarded Annie full custody once again and had ordered Matt to pay $13,140 in back child support plus $29,000 in legal fees. And Annie even had a $100,000 life insurance policy that had her parents as the beneficiary. And not even a week after Annie passed away, the insurance company contacted the detectives to tell them that Matt, her ex-husband, had called them to see if he was still the beneficiary and if he was gonna get a payout. At this point, the detectives felt like they had the motive between you know all of the arguing uh, allegedly about the, the bipolar and the, benef the benefits and now the child support and these legal fees and him reaching out seeing if he was going to get the hundred thousand dollar you know life insurance policy the detectives is like whoa 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 okay this 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 seems like the motive but it just still didn't seem like enough for them to go and arrest them so the detectives continued to investigate they were able to get a GP record for Angela's phone and when they did they found that just three days after Annie had been slain Angela's phone was shown going into like this wooded area it showed that this was the only time she had went into this wooded area she stayed there for seven and a half minutes she left and she never went back there again 
So the detectives decided that they were going to go to this wooded area, look around and try to figure out why she was there. Now, when the detectives got there, they saw that the spot went either up where you could like walk up this wooded area or you could walk down. The detectives just guessed that Angela, if she went there, she would probably take the easy route and go down. And when they did, this is when they found the evidence that they would need. When they went down this hill, they found like this little creek area that was about four foot deep. I believe it was a volunteer, like a person with the investigators that went in and sh this, this woman went into the water and she began to search around. She ended up coming across this like big gray plastic bin and when they pulled the bin out of the water, they found that it had another like plastic bag inside of it and it had rocks in it in order to weigh it down. When they pulled the contents out of the bag that was in this bin, this is where they found bloody clothes. Now, interestingly enough, they found a pajama top that had different colors on it and it had like a skull on it. When the investigators had Matt and Angela's home searched, they found the pants, the pajama pants, that matched that top that was in that bin. They also ended up finding a boot, a boot that had been wedged in these like logs that was in this wooded area. When they took the boot in, this is when they found that the bottom of the boot matched the bloody footprint that was found at the crime scene. When this bloody boot print came back, they were also able to find that Angela had purchased these boots back in 2015, and this was really all they needed. The, the evidence at this point was seemingly overwhelming. But if that wasn't enough, later it would come back that Angela's DNA was then found on one of those uh, sharp objects that was in the house. In October of 2017, 37-year-old Angela was arrested and charged with aggravated murder and first-degree burglary. After Angela's arrest, Matt was questioned by the detectives again, and this time he said on the night of the attack, Angela had came home covered in all this red bodily fluid, and he said that he helped Angela clean herself up, but besides that, he had nothing to do with the situation that happened between Angela and Annie. Now, Matt also told the detectives that he did have around 10 conversations with his, at this time, wife about ending Annie's life, but he never went through with it himself. However, he did admit to contacting Angela's ex-husband at one point to try to hire him to take out a hit on his ex-wife, Annie, but he couldn't because he didn't have enough money to pay for it. Eventually, 38-year-old Matt was indeed arrested as well, but he wasn't arrested until the summer of 2019, and he ended up being charged with one count of solicitation to commit murder, two counts of criminal conspiracy to commit murder, and one count of hindering the prosecution. In November of 2020, Angela pled guilty to one count of second degree murder and she ended up being sentenced to life in prison. Now, she will be eligible for parole after serving 25 years though. So, life in prison, 25 years, that's what she ended up. If she walks a straight and narrow, she can get out in 25 years, which to me seems absolutely insane, but nevertheless, that's the rules there. Now, in August of 2021, Matt pled guilty to solicitation to commit murder and hindering the prosecution. He ended up getting sentenced to 56 months, y'all. Basically, nothing, in my opinion. And Angela and Matt did end up getting a divorce while they were in prison, and allegedly, they are no longer in contact with each other. Angela's children ended up getting put in foster care and Annie and Matt's daughter ended up going to Annie's parents and she's being raised by her grandmother, which is a really good thing. I'm really glad that their daughter ended up going with somebody who seemingly will love her and protect her and do right by her. Matt was actually supposed to be released in March of 2023, but I was not able to find any information if he ended up getting out or not. So either he's out right now or he's still in. I guess there's good chances that he is out right now. The detectives did say that they could end up coming back and charging him with murder in, in the future if more evidence comes out or comes to prove that he had more involvement in it than what they were able to prove. This story, I mean, so many of it is, some, you know, so many similarities 
to friends that I have or people that I know that, you know, end up having a child with somebody and things change later down the road. I am a firm believer that you can be with somebody, marry somebody and love them and feel like you're doing all the right things. And that other person can change. You never know what could happen. Many th different things could happen. Mental, like mental health can come out of nowhere. There's just different things that can happen. But I, I see this type of thing so often where either I know the father that is trying everything to co-parent and be a good parent and the other person is doing all of this crazy mess or I know a mother who's doing it, like doing everything they can to be a good parent and co-parent and the father's doing all this crazy mess. Now I do know people that co-parent well together too, but then like in this situation, you have the new wife that comes in like, what in the heck? I want to know so bad too, if there are substances involved. I feel like that is not put in the forefront hardly ever in a lot of cases. Because do people really in their right minds think they can do something like this and get, get, a, get away with it? Like what were these two actually thinking? And poor like Annie's daughter. I'm going to say Annie's daughter because Matt sure wasn't acting like a father when he did all of this stuff. Like, how about go get a job instead of planning on ending your child's mother's life? Devastating. She tried everything to make this man happy. So what do you guys think? Have you heard about this situation? Have you been in a situation similar like maybe you have been in a co-parenting relationship where you've tried everything to make it work with the other person and maybe it did work just fine. Maybe they get another person in um, their lives and then things quit working. I don't know. Absolutely sad. Really seems like Annie did everything right and yeah. Y'all let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Other than that, I love you guys. Thank you all for being here and I will see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.